You know, if we were to be faithful to the authentic French pronunciation of her last name, it would actually be Bareille. But, well, since we uncultured Americans love to bastardize foreign languages, especially French for some stupid reason, I guess that's the best that our uncultured tongues could come up with, huh? Greetings one and all and welcome back to Tom's Hit Parade. It is time once again for a new album review and a throwback album review, all in one video, courtesy of my Now and Then segment. At the subject of today's Now and Then is singer-songwriter Sarah Bareilles. And for now, we'll be talking about Amidst the Chaos, her brand new album. Uh, this is her sixth album, by the way, and it's her first album in six years, not counting What's Inside, Songs from Waitress, uh, which is uh, her own recordings of songs for a musical that she composed. Now, I basically became a fan of Sarah Bareilles with her first major label album, Little Voice, and since then, nearly every one of her albums has had at least one song on it that I fell completely in love with. Uh, on Kaleidoscope Heart, it was King of Anything, and on The Blessed Unrest, it was the amazing, fantastic anthem, Brave, which was co-written by Jack, I'm literally everywhere you look, Antonoff. Just kidding, Jack. Uh, so anyway, because of those reasons, I basically did not hesitate to pick up this album as soon as I knew it was on the way, and especially when I found out that T-Bone Burnett was producing it. Uh, now, I kind of knew going in, uh, because of T-Bone Burnett's producer credit, that this album was going to be a little different. Uh, so if you're a fan of Sarah's past work and you either aren't aware that Burnett was producing this album, or you aren't familiar with the aesthetic that T-Bone Burnett usually puts on his work, you could be disappointed. Uh, now, that's not to say that this is a drastic or jarring departure from what she's done before, but it is different, possibly different enough that, as I said, some of you might be disappointed. Now, she's never been completely and totally pop, per se. I mean, she's always tended to, uh, you know, from the very beginning, tended to throw little bits of uh, adjacent genres into her music, a little jazz, a little rock, uh, sometimes a little blues or soul. Uh, but any of the pop trappings that may have been on her most recent albums are pretty much not present at all on here. Now, here on this album, uh, T-Bone Burnett has basically leaned Sarah Bareilles into the, what I like to think of as rustic, semi-rootsy, slightly Americana-ish uh, sonic palette that uh, tends to be Burnett's wheelhouse. It tends to work for him. And uh, the most obvious sign of that on this album is that as opposed to the usual electric bass that anchors the rhythm section alongside the drums, Burnett has opted here for an acoustic bass, which uh, it kind of works here, actually. It, it tends to give the songs a more intimate and more organic feel, I guess you could say. And as for the other instrumentation on this album, uh, Sarah has basically surrounded herself with an accomplished group of session musicians. You've got Jim Keltner on drums, uh, Patrick Warren on keyboards, and Mark Ribot on guitars. I look them up online. I mean, each one of them has an impressive list of credits to their names. And, and as for Sarah's voice, it's just as fantastic as it's always been. Uh, and something told me from the moment I first heard her on Little Voice that she has the kind of voice that could take on a broad range of genres, and this album completely supports my original hypothesis of it. I mean, after this album, I could easily see her going into uh, taking a detour into uh, country or jazz even. And lyrically as well, uh, this album is just as solid as any of her previous efforts. Uh, the first single, Armor, is a feminist anthem of the highest order, and I love it. And befitting its title, it starts out with an almost militaristic marching beat which just grabs the ear instantly, particularly because it's carried out with that acoustic bass and also the lower end of a piano or keyboard alongside it that, that kind of give it an added lower end momentum. Um, and uh, there's another track salt called Saint Honesty that seems to have a bit of a veiled political message. Uh, I got the same feeling from this uh, song here uh, with its weather metaphor. Uh, it, it struck me as being a counterpart of sorts to Barbara Streisand's song The Rain Will Fall off of her album Walls. Uh, but whereas Barbara's uh, song gives us a sense that we may be in control, uh, Sarah's song is more consigning our fate to Mother Nature, which gives it an interesting twist. And uh, there's another song on here called Eyes on You it, that just pulled me in with the first verse. It, uh, I can't be sure, but it seems to be a song just about how the world keeps moving and 
everybody's caught up in their own stuff, their own problems, uh, except for the singer, who's preoccupied with someone else, uh, her lover or her child, possibly her parent. And another standout song on here is called Poetry by Dead Men. And as if the title weren't intriguing enough, uh, this is just a, yet another well-crafted ballad about the singer basically eulogizing a relationship with a neglectful partner. And as for another song on here, Nina Simone lately seems to have been getting some attention in songs. I mean, last month we had Hosier's song, Nina Cried Power. And on this album, Sarah gives us, in this case, a love song called Miss Simone, uh, in which one of Nina's classic songs uh, serves as an anchor of sorts in a young couple's relationship. And, and that, that's just a really pretty song. I love that. I uh, love that song. And I could honestly, I could keep on talking about several more of the songs, but I'll just quickly mention uh, the delightful brill building sound of If I Can't Have You and the delicately wistful ballad No Such Thing, which I've heard is uh, a love letter of sorts. She wrote it anyway as a kind of a love letter of sorts to the Obamas. So that might uh, give the lyrics a different, uh, a different pallor or a different color. And then, of course, uh, not to be forgotten is John Legend's fantastically understated feature on the closing track, A Safe Place to Land. That's just a fantastic closer. Uh, great vocal harmonies between Sarah Bareilles and John Legend. I mean, it, kind of a, an interesting pairing that you, didn't, you wouldn't think would work, but it's just fantastic. So anyway, as if you couldn't tell, I absolutely love this album. Uh, it's quite possibly my favorite of the year so far. So uh, yeah, you've got to check it out uh, if you haven't yet. I can't stop talking about it, so I'm going to force myself to uh, put it down here, uh, because that was now, and this is then. Little Voice, her major label debut album from 2007. Now, I actually had not listened to this album in several years, and that's one of the reasons that I'm glad I started this Now and Then segment is uh, because uh, it's been helping me to uh, avoid neglecting quite so many of the albums in my collection. Uh, I decided to use this one as the, the Then segment of this feature specifically because I hadn't listened to it in so long, and it reminded me of the things that I enjoyed about Sarah Bareilles from the very beginning, uh, one of those things is, uh, as I said earlier, how she was able to sneak in traces of several other genres on what was ostensibly a pop album. Uh, I was able to hear influences of jazz and soul and even a tiny bit of folk and maybe even country in some places. And just as much vocally as instrumentally on this album. I was just as intrigued with uh, how well her voice seemed to just transcend and pull together all of those influences. And of course there is the big hit from the album, Love Song, that everybody knows about, uh, which is a great song, but the album has so many more things going for it beyond that track. Uh, Morningside is more of a, a kind of a rock sounding track that reminds me of uh, Sheryl Crow, uh, if you replace the Sheryl Crow's guitar with a piano. And then there's Love on the Rocks, which is really jazzy and kind of bluesy, but at the same time very reminiscent of 70s Elton John. And in fact, on a live album, she actually performs Love on the Rocks as the first half of a medley with Benny and the Jets, uh, because the tempos just completely go together. And call me crazy, but on the song Come Round Soon on this album, it reminds me a little bit of some of Amy Winehouse's singles. So uh, yeah, I mean, there's just a little bit of everything in there, blues and soul and jazz. And uh, since nearly all the songs on this album employ the piano as the central instrument, uh, comparisons to other piano-based singer-songwriters are going to be pretty much inevitable. But honestly, with her talent, those comparisons are not totally uncalled for. Uh, she cited Carole King as an inspiration in more recent interviews, uh, but I can hear it all the way back on this album. Uh, on songs like the, the melancholy ballad Between the Lines and The Delicate Closer Gravity, that's, just, that's a beautiful song, I love that one. And the breezy song One Sweet Love, which uh, is actually one of the few songs on this album uh, that uh, mostly utilizes guitar rather than piano. Uh, but, you know, despite that, it reminds me of Carol King. And there's another song called Many of the Miles, which uh, has kind of a blue-eyed soul sort of a feel to it that kind of subtly suggests maybe Billy Joel. But at the same time, same time it's got kind of a bounce that makes me think of Gavin DeGraw. So, you know, I, I say, you know, check this album out as well. Help check out her old whole discography if you haven't yet. Uh, she is just one of my favorite female artists, honestly, of uh, the 21st century. So now, as for which album is better, 
You know, it's honestly, it's a draw, really. Uh, they both have their strengths uh, in very different ways, and they're both very different albums in a way. Uh, I'm honestly still absorbing amidst the chaos, uh, pretty much. I mean, I've listened to it, what, three or four times preparing for this video, but I'm still, there's still things that I mi find that I've missed on previous listens each time I listen to it again. So I'm still absorbing this one, but then this one, and honestly, this one is kind of a very different album from Amidst, amidst the Chaos. So she was kind of a different artist in some ways back then. So I say listen to both. Uh, for me, it's kind of a draw, honestly. Uh, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this uh, look at Sarah Bareilles now and then. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I appreciate the feedback, whether about this video or anything on my channel, or about music in general. I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below. I invite you to subscribe to my channel as well, and check out my past videos to see what you might have missed. I'm also on Twitter, and you can find a link to my Twitter feed in the description below, so check it out and follow along. Also, please take the time to visit my friends and fellow YouTubers' channels, which are also linked to in the description below. They're all great at what they do, and they're very much worth your attention. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.